Have you ever wanted to experience the highest level of systematic torture a human being could possibly ever endure? Or maybe that big old 200 IQ brain of yours has dreamt of what it is like to assert newfound alpha male dominance via the method of sometimes lethal but always effective electricity fisting. Well, if you said yes to all or none of those questions that truly weren't really questions, then too bad. We're going to be looking into levels of masochism previously unheard of. Pretty much the BME Pain Olympics of video game challenges. Can you beat Spider-Man Miles Morales without taking damage? With this game being out for two weeks now and our erections beginning to subside, it's time to grab this game by the nipples and give it a little twist. A little challenge to test the waters and see what Insomniac has in store for those that enjoy suffering in the therapeutic form of video game challenges. As per the title of this video, the rules are simple. I will be resetting the game to the last checkpoint every time I take any sort of damage, even if it's a smurf's dick's worth. Luckily, seeing as we've done challenges like this before, we have come adequately prepared, having given a hand job to the generous man known as fate a handful of times. Will my situational awareness that has often been compared to that of shitty porn star actors be enough to take on the tinkerer? Will you guys be able to make it through the onslaught of electricity puns I'll be making throughout this video? Well, go ahead and close that browser full of anime mommy milkies and set aside 20 minutes of your time, boys, because we're dropping tilt the towers and there's no going back. Miles is the second arachnid boy to join in on this threesome, and with our combined masculinity and intellect, there was mathematically no way that anything could ever go wrong. The proud and noble race known as New York citizens were in peril, but ever since taking his title as the Diet Spider-Man, Miles swore on his Tims that he would use his powers at all costs to protect New York City. With their plan now in shambles, and the CEO of illegal Chinese steroids and tiny testicles now out of his cage, it was time for me, the autistic crime-fighting aristocrat, to use my fist to their fullest extent. Immediately off the bat, I am left with a sour taste in my asshole. It seemed as though Insomniac had forgotten the importance of catering to challenge runners like us. Not even a whole three seconds and half a pube into this run, we have lost <laughs> the challenge. We're not calling it here, gentlemen. We don't speak that putrid language known as failure. So let's go ahead and butt chug or shotgun the remaining G Fuel we have left and pretend this didn't happen. No, Senza, you definitely lost We are going to pretend that this didn't happen. After fully recovering from the premeditated assault Insomniac attempted on my livelihood, I was then greeted with another tsunami of concentrated AIDS. If there was a creativity award for absolutely pillaging my ass, then it would most definitely go to Rhino. A little Goomba stomp to the forehead, never hurt anyone. Fool me once, shame on you. But fool me twice, that just isn't possible because I'm perfect and the OG Spider-Man passed me the reins of failed abortion man, and I enjoyed the brief ride he took me on before he made me an accomplice of domestic terrorism. Whether his claims of his controller disconnecting were valid or not, this man needed to be stopped. Thanks to my unmatched Spider-Man gaming intuition and prowess, I was able to take out his henchmen and not a single ounce of damage was bestowed upon my health bar. I was out here risking life, limb, and nipples, and so was Peter. R.I.P. our boy Peter. He ain't dead, but it was now time for Diet Spider-Man to take the spotlight. Before we continue, I'll throw up a disclaimer now that this next scene will make many men exceptionally horny. To put this eloquently, Spider-Man PS4's combat was great, but the combat in Miles Morales will make your nuts quake. Your little fucking nuts are gonna start quaking. For the No Nut November soldiers out there, I would advise you stop watching this video, as I would hate for you to lose the challenge a few days before the crusade is over. As for our scholars, oh, go ahead and stick blessed. around, but you all have been warned. In a moment of truth, Miles channeled his inner Pikachu and learned a fisting technique not even the ancient ancient scriptures have mentioned. The Venom Punch is exclusive to only Miles, almost like his very own pre-order bonus when he got bit by that radioactive spider. And as you can see in presentation 32B and C, this thing absolutely fucks. Rhino's pussy was not enjoying this, and after just one reset from a stupid mess up, that man got the beatdown he deserved. Rhino was now to be incarcerated by none other than Topher Grace, aka Eddie Brock from Spider-Man 3. And although Homeland Security and government officials were probably searching for us, we got out of there safe and sound. Peter and I recuperated over a nice warm pie of oh dear fucking lord! Are you
you win inside. I had totally forgot that Insomniac had butchered our boy. What the fuck? Turning him into some sort of foreskin humunculus looking f that probably puts looking for adventures and loves to listen in his Tinder profile description. Honestly though, we're going to have to look past this r slash roast me session because there is absolutely nothing we can do about this. But I just want Insomniac to know that we really do not appreciate what you did to our boy. With my Tard Wrangler now out on vacation, there is absolutely no reason to question my competence. I had this superhero gig in the bag. After a little training area that so happened to be enhanced with Disney Fast Play, I took on my first lead as the only Spider-Man in New York to take down a few hooligans that were up to the naughty naughty. As Miles began eating apples from the Tree of Knowledge, known as Topher's Google search history, new erotic fetishes weren't the only thing to be discovered here. It became very apparent to Miles that a new faction of baddies had acquired Fallout Power Fist, and they wanted him the f*** out of here. Unfortunately, this is where things would start to pick up and the difficulty of this challenge would come into play. On ultimate difficulty, enemies have more health and the time to dodge their incoming attacks is cut down significantly. It also doesn't help that my enemies now had guns. 33 resets later through this dicking assembly line, I'm not even sure how their spines are still aligned after all the clapping that they did to my butt cheeks. But eventually, after playing like a soy boy, I was finally out of there and got to enjoy Christmas Eve with the family. An old friend who totally wouldn't potentially betray us in the future joined us for this dinner, and it turns out that not a single person in that household had functioning optic nerves. I could have goatseed my bare asshole and showed them God, and they still wouldn't have been able to see it. Unique to Miles Morales is the ability to select side quests from your very own database of side quests. Interestingly enough, the first side quest given to us is provided by none other than Miles' very own uncle. He informed us of a group of degens that were committing crimes, and they needed a spanking. Upon arriving at the location, I noticed immediately that these guys were aggressively American. Not only was there just a single bodyguard, but they also had glorified sex dolls locked away in a safe box. Fortunately, for us, we are going to be using these bad boys to our advantage, just as the pioneers did back in the day. I forgot to mention earlier that I will be refraining from any sort of stealth combat this run. I made this rule to appeal to you YouTube devils, but also because it would make this video incredibly boring and equivalent to 40 milligrams of melatonin. A bit of dabbling in the art of being an absolute fucking dumbass later. What the fuck? Fixed the train line so our subway system could get back to being on track. <laughs> and then was told that downtown New York needed a man that so happened to be a fine curator of all that is crime fighting. I'm sure these goons were shocked to see me, but my boy Miles, he was ecstatic. No, 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 I'll stop, I'll stop, I'll stop, please, please. My success during this part was determined by whether or not I could press the circle button and play catch just like Miles would with the father he doesn't have anymore. Once the streets were clean, our anime protagonist's uncle informed us that we were incredibly bad at lying, and then I immediately hopped up into the Tims for a very special occasion. The girl from earlier requested that we meet up and overdose on a little something known as nostalgia. We laughed and spoke of the good old days. The love in the air reeked, almost about as pungent as an anime girl's wet spot. But unfortunately, this was all just a facade, because not even 24 hours later, we made the discovery that Miss Shitlips over here was the leader of the gang that has been terrorizing New York and giving me my unending amount no, of hemorrhoids. Place. Trash. After watching Miles' mother and her political campaign get pranked, and just to be clear, it wasn't the gone wrong slash gone sexual variant of pranks, just a normal one, I was thrown up against Miss Face's army of tier 3 subs. The difficulty in 53 resets during this part hit me a little differently, especially since the beginning of this game has been absurdly easy up until this point. The plan was to isolate these f**ks, taking each one out one by one. This method of attack did in fact make my penis shrink a whole 4 inches, but at least I was able to get the job done. With that giant now toppled and morale is at a record breaking low from all the resets, I venom fisted the f**k out of the enemies that occupied the bridge and made it out of there on my 10th try. 
Roxxon's variant of Halo Spartans clearly thought that Miles was being possessed by a malevolent spirit, but thanks to the fact that he was pretty much a scientific anomaly, he was able to get out of there safe and sound. With invisibility now on the table, Miles wasn't the only one here with the confused boner. But for this run, we also won't be using this newfound skill as it would make things absurdly easy. Now that it was made clear that Little Miss Shitlips was the one causing us and New York pain, it was up to us and our totally not overpowered and shouldn't be nerfed arsenal to stop her. With the newfound discovery that was discovered while sneaking through a place I shouldn't have snuck through, I found out that she was only in this for Topher's blood. I wasn't sure why, but you can bet that ass of yours that I wasn't going to stop till the fat lady farted. Today is a great day, and a great day means that there are a great deal of asses to be dealt with. Those asses in question were delivered to me via Uber to take their lethal doses of fist. This Roxxon part was pretty much mediocre and not really too difficult. All it took was 29 resets and the discovery that Uncle Aaron was the Prowler. A. Aaron was here to try and stop Miles, but Miles' pure willpower and determination to find Finn's phone was unmatched. Pretty much equivalent to that of a pre scrolling through the Pornhub homepage just for shits and giggles. Miles finally found the phone he was looking for and was able to view the unreleased OnlyFans content Finn was planning on dropping. This man only came here and went wow. through all of this for the feet, but instead was given a broken heart. This new form of energy Roxxon created was a big no-no, and if health officials were to find out about this atrocity, they would shit their undies and slap their newborn babies. Miles knew what he had to do. He grabbed that reactor by the tits, and there was no looking back. I really do appreciate his answer to the sweet call of justice, but he can also go f*** himself, because he pretty much made us lose the challenge once again. For those that are enthusiasts in this form of torture, we should all acknowledge that this is absolutely normal, and we are are going to forget that this ever happened once again. And no, no, I'm not here to threaten you guys a second time. I'll just bribe you. Here's some money, and hopefully this will be enough to keep you and your stupid mouths shut. Getting out of Roxxon was actually quite the toughie, and I was truly feeling it on the final wave of baddies. New shield enemies were introduced to the mix, and as always, my venom powers were doing more to these enemies' assholes than the dollar menu at Taco Bell. Fortunately, Uncle Aaron, aka the Prowler, joined in on this gangbang and helped to relieve the pain just in time for us to get the f*** out of there. Phase 2 of our plan to take down Miss F*** Face and her gang of simps was now going to come into play and we were going to milk that baby good. We needed to dig up a relic from our past and learn the ways of Sam Fisher to channel our inner Splinter Cell double agent. This was not going to be an easy task. Getting Finn to accept us into her gang and a lot- oh, alright. That was easy. Overall, the simp and soy boy HQ wasn't too much of a pain. Dragging out the enemies and picking off one by one helped out in thinning the pack. And although a new sword enemy came into play, all I had to do was cross my fingers and testicles that I could dodge their attacks at the right time, and we were set. As for the next part of this roller coaster, though, things didn't go as smoothly. And I absolutely hate when things aren't buttery smooth. After finding the location of another new form reactor that needed to be karate fucked out of this existence, Miles made his way to take it out. But nowhere in this superhero crime fighting contract did it say that this area would take me nearly two hours. 63 fucking resets and I was out here praying to any and all gods for some sort of salvation. All it took was a little break and some therapeutic healing via a method only known by monks and holy leaders alike. Once I had rejuvenated, your boy was back out there like a goddamn sensei of all that is pain and death, and brought only that. Inside, I had my sights on the reactor, and after I powered that baby up, I was pleasantly greeted with more of my favorite mentally challenged humans. There isn't too much to say about what happened next, because once again, this part truly sucked some seriously disgusting asshole. It was pretty much the outside area, just with some World of Warcraft LARPing dude. After a pretty neat chase scene, Miss this bitch tits got the best of our favorite little Pikachu in spandex and figured out our true identity. Miles knew deep down in his hernias and hemorrhoids that revealing himself meant he needed to convince her to stop this healthy obsession with new form and to potentially reopen her OnlyFans because he's been itching for some of that.
Finn pretty much hated me more than 30 Hitlers. I had lied to her, tried pulling a splinter cell double agent, and literally beat her simp senselessly, all within a day's worth of time. But she was going to hate me even more after this next stunt. Miles asked his uncle for advice, and after following it, set up a meeting with Finn to sort this whole situation out. Too bad Uncle Aaron decided he would like to stretch the definition of what is family, and turned our rendezvous meeting into a fat stack of dog shit candy. Answer. We used to think that this guy was cool, almost as cool as a combination Pizza Hut and Taco Bell. But now, me and my homies, we hate him. The man who looked like he was one tender rejection away from having a mental breakdown turned out to be the curator of this kidnapping. At this point, we may as well call this man underwear because him and his men wouldn't get off of our nuts. As Mr. Roxon's men continued to beat Miles, little did Topher and his men know that Miles was a freak and this BDSM session did nothing but get him fired up. With just a simple input of three buttons, we pretty much let loose our bottled up autism and a supernova. Our freedom was granted to us in a flavor many know as anime protagonist realizes his true potential, and this was great. Getting out of Roxxon HQ was probably one of the worst parts of this run, and resulted in 93 resets within a span of an hour and a half. To paraphrase all that happened here, I got hit a lot. And that statement there doesn't even encapsulate what I truly went through. When it came to the Rhino boss fight, I ended up throwing the run one damage phase away from finishing it. And this absolutely broke me. Because of course, after resetting a checkpoint, you lose all of the sweet venom juices you had previously acquired, turning this entire encounter into a fat stinker. And no, convincing the hulking genetic steroid Russian freak to seize his oddly obsessive actions was not an option. Little Miss Shit Lips lost her title as my war queen and proceeded to give me that KFC two-piece combo with a drink, side, and a cookie. Side effects of consuming such a meal may or may not include testicular torsion and the fact that Finn was not our friend, but a foe that needed to be stopped. Mommy Morales gave me that good old pep talk. My best friend told me I was f***ed and about as useless as an empty toilet paper roll being used as a dildo. And I released the inner anger I had built up to punch somebody so hard he didn't even have enough time to tell Mr. Stark he didn't feel so good. Oblivious to my surroundings, we are kidnapped a second time. Although we could argue that Miles is quite a popular and attractive young lad with his exaggerated swagger and ability to certainly be himself, one thing is for sure, he needs to get better at not being f***ing kidnapped. On paper, this probably seemed like a great plan, but Aaron should have known that talking would have been an easier option and it wouldn't have included the risk of sterilization via electricity. I can tell you now that Aaron stood absolutely no match. 170 pounds of pure wit and verbal diarrhea. 28 resets later, Miles told Uncle Aaron to suck his f I spent way too long trying to secure the museum because I'm an absolute idiot for a living. And then I realized that I went through all of that suffering to be cucked yet again by our favorite little antagonist. Even days after recording this gameplay, I am still plagued by what I had gone through to get to the final boss of the run. Just as I was starting to grow some hair on my gooch and not play like a little bitch, I was persuaded by the forceful hands of fate and 88 resets to sit the f*** down and be grateful I have even gotten this far. I just want to be clear and tell you all that this gameplay footage does not correlate with who I am as a human being. If my parents saw me playing like this, they would disown me and tell me that I have brought shame to our family name. But it's a good thing that literally nobody I know in the real world has a clue about this channel or the things I do for you OnlyFans patrons in my free time. Surprisingly, by the time I got to Finn to finish this off once and for all, I was at 513 resets. Most of those were due to me having brain queefs, but for quite a short game like Miles Morales, 513 seemed like quite a lot. She asked Miles if his ass ever got jealous from all the shit that came out of his mouth, and then he tried to guilt trip her, bringing up everything that they had been through. But words, unfortunately, were not enough to ameliorate this situation. This final boss fight really was something else. Most of the fight depended on whether or not I could dodge her sword attacks, and with the fact that I almost always choke under pressure, this felt impossible. At this point, I had pretty much seen this boss fight more times than I've seen my very own father. The 1v1 was made up of 
of three phases. And after each checkpoint, the dopamine response I got was otherworldly. Even though she filled each of my pre-existing holes with her weaponry and massive cock, I was able to chip away and finally end this, securing that chicken dinner. Finn realized that she was far too high on the turbo idiot spectrum, and I did my best to stop what she started. After super injecting 48 electric power plants into my bloodstream, Finn decided it was time to redeem herself and took me into outer space so I could blow my load. There we are, gentle boys and girls. We made it through this video essay, and we beat Doom Eternal without ever thinking about a waifu marauder. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and pound that like button. If you respect the crusades we carry out on this channel, go ahead and potentially subscribe. Originally, I had another video in mind before dropping this one, but after having so much fun with Miles Morales, I decided to throw that video on the back burner and work on this one. Thank you to the Diaper Booty Chairman for funding these holy crusades, and thank you for watching. See you next time, you cutie idiots, and I hope you had a great Thanksgiving.